Hi. So today I want to look at how to solve differential equations using power series. Isn't that right, Overleaf Duck? <laughs> he says that's right. That's what we're going to cover. So what is it? Um, what's the technique? What do we do? Um, in short, there's just a few things you do. You start with, um, start by Assuming that your, um, your unknown function has a power series expansion. And, um, you know, typically centered at zero, but if the initial condition of an IVP is given somewhere else, you could is given at some value other than zero, you could center it wherever the initial condition is. Um, I'll assume that it's centered at zero, right? Just for sake of cleanliness. Um, let's say, right, assume centered at zero. Um, you know, it's always just the change of variables away from that anyway, right? Um, so let's assume centered at zero. And, you know, so you're gonna write, say y of x equals a zero plus a one x plus a two, x squared plus a three x cubed and so on. Um, then what are you going to do from there? Just plug that power series in into the DE, right? For um, for your unknown function. And then what you'll be able to do, you'll actually be able to solve for the coefficients. So a0, a1, a2, a3, etc., one at a time. Um, and that part is, um, how, you know, how exactly you'll be able to solve for the coefficients. Um, it might make the most sense in an example. You'll see the process for that. Um, but basically what you do is, you want to um, equate by equating degree zero terms, or maybe I should say coefficients, um, coefficients, degree one coefficients, degree two coefficients. Um, and, and what coefficients exactly am I referring to there? Well, basically the differential equation, once you plug in that series, the left hand and right hand side of the differential equation are both going to be power series. So then you just equate the left hand side degree zero coefficient to the right hand side degree zero coefficient, left hand side degree one coefficient to the right hand side degree one coefficient, and so on. All right. So you get this infinite system of equations that'll let you solve one at a time for those for those coefficients. Um, then just um, take those answers and rebuild, you know, the function y of x, right, by plugging back in, um, right? By plugging now these no values that you know, right? These values of, that you now found of a0, a1, a2, etc. cetera. Um, and with power series solutions, you know, maybe you can't find the general solution or maybe you just do some approximation and maybe you just say, eh, degree four power series approximation. Maybe you stop at degree four, right? Um, or maybe there's a nice pattern. You, you can actually find the general pattern for the for the solutions, right? So um, so if you know if possible, um, and this isn't always possible, right? But if possible, find a general pattern. For you know what is that nth coefficient, a sub n, um, and if you can find y of x in some closed form, that's that's great. Um, you may or may not be able to do that, right? You might have to just leave y of x as a power series. That certainly happens. But sometimes we can do that, right? In nice cases, we can do that. So this is the technique for how to solve um, a differential equation using power series, right? Just write your unknown function as a power series, plug it in to the differential equation, um, then equate coefficients one degree at a time, solve for a0, a1, a2, a3, um, and plug those back in to get your answer. So it maybe sounds like a mouthful, but it's um, 
it's fairly simple in in a concrete setting to carry out these steps. Let's look. Um, let's solve the initial value problem um, that we actually had looked at in a few other contexts, right? We had actually already solved this um, in using uh, separation variables, right? And also using integrating factors. So let's solve the IVP dt dt equals two times t minus 10, right? So that's our differential equation with t of zero equals 15. Right? This is our um, initial value problem, our initial condition and our differential equation. Um, so let's look and see how would we solve this with power series? Well, the first thing we would do is write t as some unknown power series, right? And, you know, how far out you want to go um, kind of depends on, I guess, how accurate of an approximation you're looking for. If you're just looking for an approximation here, I'm going to go at three, four, hoping that five coefficients is enough to maybe spot a pattern and get the general solution. So first we'll write our unknown, um, then we'll plug it in. Um, Plug it into the differential equation, right? Um, and also the initial condition, right? And, and here, I actually want to start with the initial condition um, just because what's kind of nice is um, this initial condition, t of zero, right? That's, that's really just giving you the value of a zero. It's just another way to say a zero, right? t of zero equals 15 look what happens, right? If you apply that initial condition, we're just saying 15 equals a zero plus a one times zero plus a two times zero squared plus, right? All the later terms go away. So that's why you just get that a zero equals 15. So that's a nice, um, just a nice way to start, right? So you get one coefficient for free. Um, so, right, so the initial condition has that a zero solved for us. So we can say t of t then is 15 plus a1t plus a2t squared plus a3t cubed and so on. Right. So then we have, then we have um, to take this expression and plug it into that differential equation, right? So I'm going to take this whole giant power series expression for t, and I'm going to plug it in on the left-hand side and also on the right-hand side right, for both of those. So what am I going to get? Well, on the left-hand side, um, it's the derivative, right? So how would I take the first derivative of that power series? Well, just go term by term applying the power rule. And on the right hand side, just multiply by two and subtract 10. Right? So two times what? Well, subtract 10. So when you subtract 10, the 15 goes down to a five and then everything else just kind of hangs out, right? Not much really happens. Um, but then we can actually multiply out that two. So I get 10 plus two a one t plus two a two t squared plus two a three t cubed plus two a four t four plus then I can make my equations, right? I can make my system of equations. So, and th this is what I was referring to about um, up here of saying that we're going to equate the degree zero coefficients, the degree one coefficients, right? The uh, one at a time. So what are the degree zero coefficients? Well, on the left, it's a one. And on the right, it's 10. So that's an equation based on the degree 
zero coefficient. All right, that tells us that a one equals 10. Because the only way for these two power series to be equal is if every coefficient is equal um, to the corresponding coefficient of the same degree on the other side, right? So that's our degree zero coefficient equation, right? Then we have the degree one coefficients, right? So where do we find those? Well, it's whatever is with t, just the single power of t on the left it has to equal whatever is with the single power of t on the right. So that's what the degree one coefficients tell us. Right, so I have two a two equals two a one, and that's our degree one equation. Right. Then I'm going to have the degree two coefficients. Right, so I'm going to have three a three equal to two a two. Those are the coefficients on t squared. Right, so degree two. Coefficients, right? Of three a three equals two a two, and so on, right? Degree three right, is that four a four equals two a three? Degree four coefficients, they tell us that what that five a five equals. Uh, to a four and so on, right? So this is the um, system of equations that we're getting here. And notice that, you know, technically it's infinitely many equations and infinitely many unknowns, but it's um, not a bad way, structure for such a system of equations. Um, it's a recursion, right? It's just the depth one recursion. Um, in, you know, in general, we're getting that n a sub n equals two times a sub n or minus one. Right? That's, that's how it's proceeding, right? We have a really nice pattern here. So that's our um, our system of equations. Um, you know, I already have a zero as a number. I already have a one as a number, right? Well, I may as well just keep getting the rest of them, right? Just plug this a one into the in to get a two. Um, and then we'll plug that a2 in to get a3, plug that a3 in to get a4, and so on. So you get keep getting one more coefficient. So um, a2, this just tells us what this is. A2 um, is also 10, right? Because the twos cancel anyway, right? So there's our a2 is 10. Now that I know a2 is 10, I get that a3 is 2 times 10 over then I have a four is uh, two uh, squared times 10 over four times three, right? And I'm doing that just by plugging that value for a three in um, and then dividing both sides by four. And then I have a five is two cubed times 10 over five times four times three, and so on. Right. Now, to say what the general a sub n is right now would maybe be a little bit difficult, right? Um, but it's actually, you can get a nicer pattern here um, if you do maybe something a little bit silly looking. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite that 10 as 2 times 5. And I'm also going to multiply the top and bottom by 2. Why would I do such a thing? Well, that bottom looks a whole lot like a factorial, right? I'm trying to recognize a pattern. So I'm trying to complete that bottom out to a factorial. Um, and so the, that's why I would multiply the top and bottom of each of these by um, two, right? And then I'm also just splitting off that 10 to get a two over with the power of two. So. Once I do that, I actually get a pretty nice pattern for these coefficients. Right, the bottoms now are all factorials. Right, so what am I getting for a sub n? I'm getting two to the n times five over n factorial. Right, that's the pattern for the, the generic degree n coefficient. Right? 
but that's not the solution to the differential equation, right? That's just that's just a pattern that's holding for these um, these coefficients, right? So to actually get the solution of the differential equation, I have to plug these back in for big T. So what do I have? I have uh, 15. And notice that 15 does not fit the pattern, right? The pattern definitely starts at, at one, right? So for n greater than or equal to one, we have this pattern, um, but not at 15, right? So I have 15 and then um, a one, right? I have this two to the one times five over one t. Two squared times five over two factorial t squared. Two cubed times five t cubed over three factorial, and so on. Right. So these are the um, these are these coefficients that we just found, and taking each of them and just plugging them back in for um, those coefficients in the power series for big T, right? So I'm taking, see what I'm doing? I'm taking all these, right? And I'm plugging them back in here, a one, a two, a three, a four, right? That's where I'm, that's where I'm plugging those. So I'm getting big T by putting these um, values that I'm finding for the coefficients back into the original power series expansion for big T. That's where I'm getting this from, right? That's where I'm, that's where those coefficients are landing after you solve for them, right? Um, now this, uh, once again, sometimes you just stop here, right? Sometimes this is as much progress as you can make. You say, hey, I got a degree for approximation. And you know, that's that's about as much as I can say. Um, but sometimes not, sometimes you can go further. And, and this is definitely one of those cases. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna break up the um, 15 into a 10 and a five, because I want that first term to kind of fit the pattern of the rest of them. So I'm gonna leave the 10 off like it's its own special thing, because um, it is kind of, and then I'm gonna have the five fit the pattern with the rest of these. Um, so it's gonna go, you know, two to the one, t to the one over one factorial, right? And in fact, I'm gonna write this as two t. Then the next one we're at is five times 2t squared over 2 factorial, and then 5 times 2t cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. Right, that's our, um, that's our big T of t in kind of a different form, written in a different form. Why would I do such a thing? Well, because I want to factor out the 5, and because I want to recognize this as some a power series of a function that I already know, right? So you want to think back to your maybe Calc 2 where you covered power series and think back to those famous series, the binomial series, the power series for cosine, sine, E, log, right? Arctangent, those, all those famous power series. And say, hey, I know what this is. This is just E to the X with 2T plugged in, right? So you, you, can, right, you can recognize this as Hey, this is just the power series formula for e to the x, but with 2t subbed in for x. So that's that's how you can collapse that. Once again, not, not all the time will you actually be able to do this when you have a, a differential equation. Um, Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't, right? Um, here, but here, here we could, here we were able to. So we were able to recognize that function big T as 10 plus um, five times e to the two T based on its based on its power series. So some tricky manipulations at the end there, um, you know, thinking to split up the 15 into a 10 and a five, right? Um, but it's motivated by this goal, trying to get it back in terms of E or sine or cosine or, you know, whatever the relevant power series is for your particular example. So, all right. So that's solving a um, differential equation, or, and specifically in, here in this case, it was an initial value problem, right? Um, using power series, right? Kind of all of these same steps. Um, be aware, 
if there wasn't an initial condition given, you would just have an A0 there and you would just solve for all the coefficients in terms of A0. The process is pretty much the same, but instead of numbers, you just have A0, A0 is floating around, right? Expressions involving A0. So, all right, great. So that's our power series solution to our um, differential equation. Thanks.